In Stephen Johnson's book, Where Good Ideas Come From, he isolates seven characteristics present in environments from which innovations arise. This presentation will examine these characteristics, as well as give specific examples of how they have shaped the history of our world. These traits are unique in that they exist fractally in our environments. Fractality refers to the concept that these characteristics are present on microscopic, macroscopic, and all levels in between. These traits can be seen in the interaction between atoms, cells, organisms, companies, cities, countries, etc. In other words, if you imagine the world as being examined through a lens, no matter how zoomed in or out, these characteristics can be observed. It can be compared to the idea of reinvention. An organization, whether it be cellular, social, corporate, or anything else, will better create ideas if it is able to recognize different uses for what it already has. One example of the successful use of the adjacent possible was the creation of the Neonature Incubator. After the tsunami hit Indonesia in 2004, they were left with high-tech incubators that were out of commission, putting low birth weight babies at risk of death. The parts and the knowledge was not present to fix the incubators. What the society did have, however, was working cars. Using me mechanics expertise, they created new incubators known as neo-nurtures made entirely of car parts. The second trait covered by Johnson is known as liquid networks. Johnson recognized that big ideas do not arise from an individual sitting and thinking about specific problems, but rather through the free flowing of ideas from different parties. Good ideas are almost never singular, but a swarm of like-minded ideas that eventually solve a problem. A great example of liquid networks at work was the rise of double entry accounting. Double entry accounting is now the cornerstone of modern bookkeeping, but it did not arise until economies started shifting from feudal structures in which a few minds monitored most of the money to the more open marketplaces of capitalism where goods, ser good services as well as ideas were freely traded. The exact origins of double entry accounting remain unknown, but what is known is that it became the gold standard of monitoring financial health through it being taught in the marketplace. As merchants sold their wares, they also discussed bookkeeping and business with their contemporaries. Through this exchange of information, the use of double entry accounting proliferated. It's important to note that liquid networks do not necessarily mean that every person or piece in the network contributes to a particular idea, but rather that when a good idea is developed, it can be shared throughout the network, thus increasing the adjacent possible of everyone else in the network and therefore increasing the likelihood that they may make a positive contribution to the network later on. The next trait of innovative organizations is that they allow for the slow hunch to be developed. While it makes for good stories, for the most part, major history-changing innovations did not emerge from a light bulb going off moment some individual had, but rather were developed over time after it was nurtured and perfected. A simple solution to facilitate the slow hunch to come to fruition is to write down one's thoughts and ideas as they come. One of Charles Darwin's most important tools in his development of the theory of evolution was his notebook. He had a hunch that the different species he was researching were interconnected, but could not clearly communicate this until copious data was collected. Once he was able to examine his compiled observations from an extensive period of time, he was able to clearly see the picture that his hunch was pushing him to look for. Developing slow hunches is essential to innovation. Too often, good ideas, or at least the beginnings of good ideas, are abandoned and forgotten for more menial but immediate issues that present themselves. The fourth trait of innovative organizations is the promotion of serendipity. Serendipity is defined as the unsought, un unintended, and or unexpected discovery and or learning experience that happens by accident and sagacity. By definition, serendipity is not something that can be forced. However, organizations can increase the likelihood that innovators be serendipitous. The simplest solution to increase serendipity in an organization is to eliminate all barriers to free-flowing of ideas. Creating an environment of free-flowing ideas increases the density of ideas within the organization. This increases the likelihood that a member of an organization serendipitously stumbles upon one of his counterpart's ideas that happens to help with his own innovation. The next trait of innovative society is the presence of error, or at least the trait that members in the society are not error-averse. Error is related to serendipity in that oftentimes an error made in the process of developing one idea becomes the unintended solution to another problem. Johnson notes that the mantra of internet startups is fail faster. A classic example of an error becoming the solution to a problem was the development of the post-it note. An innovator at 3M was attempting to create a super strong adhesive 
but instead created a super weak one, one which left behind no residue when stuck to things. This adhesive was applied to paper, and post-it notes have since been ubiquitous to office life. The sixth trait of innovation is exaptation, or the application of already existing ideas, concepts, or technologies for previously unforeseen uses. There are many examples of exaptation in human history as well as natural selection process. When Gutenberg was inventing the printing press, he used the already present technology of the wine press to accomplish his goal. In nature, birds evolved to be covered in feathers that served as temperature regulators. Through exaptation, feathers became an essential component in a bird's ability to fly in that they altered the airflow around the bird's wing in such a way that lift was produced. There are countless more examples of innovators exapting existing concepts to solve their new problems. The final trait essential to innovative societies is the development of platforms. Platforms refer to building off already existing innovations to improve and expand their uses. The internet has led to an extensive and fertile environment for innovation through platforms. Developers use the already present technology to write new programs that allow users to do more. Platforms were also used in the development of GPS technologies. Originally, satellites were launched to track enemy submarines. Innovators recognized that they had the platform of the satellites already being in use and improved them so that they could be used by individual consumers to easily navigate while driving their cars. While it is not impossible for good ideas to be developed by an individual with little to no outside resources, it is unlikely. By promoting and implementing the traits described by Johnson, corporations, organizations, schools, churches, or any other groups can increase the likelihood that innovative thinking take place which can improve our world.